Does your ex like you or are they just being nice? That's what this video is about. But first, my name is Clay with Modern Love dot life. Many times I'll be talking to someone about their relationship and it, you know, I'm like, okay, it sounds like the two of you like each other. It sounds like they really like you. And then the client will say something like, oh, well, I'm, I'm, what, what if they're just being nice? And I get that, you know, it, it, it could be something that ha that's happening. However, we want to look at this a little bit closer. Chances are most of the time, if your ex is acting like they are actually interested in you, they probably genuinely are. Most of the time, your ex is going to be incredibly sensitive to the idea that they might potentially be sending out false hope or false interest or something like that. Uh, you know, they don't want to think of themselves as the kind of person that uses you, strings you along or anything like that. So they're probably going to be very sensitive to this, which means if you are getting some sort of messages from them that it seems like they're interested, they probably are. However, if they are just being nice, um, here are some things that you might experience. First of all, if they have a hard time being direct, or if they're conflict avoidant, or if they just have weak boundaries, if they're like a people pleaser sort of person, and they just want to, you know, like smooth things over and just have like a nice civil kind of thing, and they don't really have a lot of courage when it comes to being direct and honest with you, that could be a setup for them just being polite, being nice to you. Most of the time, these people are going to be really sensitive. They'll probably be really vague and cryptic. Um, you are probably going to sense a great deal of emotional distance, even though their words might be saying like, oh yeah, that sounds nice, we should hang out sometime or whatever. Um, but that could be a setup. You know, if you look at them and their personality, are they more of like a people pleaser, more of like someone with a weak set of boundaries, someone with uh, difficulty being direct, things like that. The second thing is that if you and them kind of end up in what we call the polite trap. The two of you could be in a situation where they might just be being nice. So what is the polite trap? The polite trap is when the two of you are polite with one another, but you're not really opening up and sharing anything meaningful or substantial or personal. Again, if your ex is just being nice to you and they don't really have feelings for you, they're going to probably keep you at a little bit of a distance because they know they're going to be really sensitive to getting too close to you and that they, that, that might give you false impressions that they care about you or something like that in maybe a way that they don't. And so what you may experience is the polite trap, which is, you know, oh yeah, how was your day today? Oh, that's great. That's good. Yeah, yeah. What's going on next week? Oh, okay. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. You know, just kind of talk like that where you're not really getting too personal and you're not saying something like, oh yeah, that I, I, I like that about you. That totally reminds me of the time that uh, I did something and it caused me to feel a little bit afraid and a little bit nervous. And um, you know, I had to like dig down deep in order to get through it. Like if you're having like real meaningful emotional connection, then that of course can help the two of you come closer together. And um, we wanna be kind of mindful of this because if we are being too polite, we're not really giving them a whole lot of us to latch onto, and likewise, they're not getting a whole lot of themselves to latch onto as well. So what I usually in, in, invite my clients to do is to step out of the polite act themselves and to be a little bit more personal, be a little bit more vulnerable, be a little bit more transparent about where they're at, what they're experiencing, how they're feeling about things, what their opinions are, etc. in a personal way, you know, not just like, this is what I think of the current political situation. Like that, that's kind of an example of false intimacy, but more about like, hey, this is how I feel about my grandmother passing away, or this is how I feel about this totally challenging thing that I'm going through right now, or, you know, I really want to know what your thoughts are about uh, that, that challenging thing that you're going through right now, or whatever the case might be. But once we actually start to take it to a personal level, rather than just like, you know, something hypothetical, something theoretical out there, like the news or what some famous person did or whatever, but it's actually something personal, that's a whole other story. And if we actually start to bring it to that level, if they are just being nice to you, that's gonna cause them to feel a little bit uncomfortable. They're gonna to start to create some distance. But if they're genuinely interested in you, they're gonna to wanna to go there too. By the way, you know, if you wanna be able to have that kind of connection, we do have a video playlist on what we call advanced relational skills. You can check that out right up there in the upper right-hand corner and uh, go ahead and click on that. And you can go ahead and learn more about advanced relational skills. What this really all comes down to is navigating through a dark room. Many times when we are stuck with something in a romantic sense or maybe in other areas of life as well too, it's kind of like if you were to be dropped into a dark room. 
uh, you know, you can't see anything, you don't know what sort of furniture or walls or doors might be in the way, but you know you want to get to the other side of the room and go into some other place, hopefully where you can see better. Um, and so what tends to happen is that people who are kind of emotionally in a dark room, they could do one of two things. They, they think like, okay, I don't want to trip over a piece of furniture. I don't want to smack into a wall or something. So what, I'm, what am I going to do? I'm just going to stand still. I'm going to stay where I'm at. I'm going to stay in my comfort zone. Okay, great. You're not going to trip over something. You're not going to smack into something, but you're also not going to get anywhere. You're also not going to get out of that dark room. So obviously that is not a good option because, you know, that would be like just staying in your comfort zone, continuing with the polite trap, continuing wondering, are they into me? Are they not into me? I don't know. Continuing whatever you're doing. You're not going to get into any trouble probably, but you're also not going to get anywhere. And so what we want to do is we want to get somewhere. Now this causes people to think, okay, that sounds really dangerous. That means I have to like confess my feelings. I have to take a big risk. I have to, you know, basically just in the dark room, lunge across the room and hope that I don't trip over something or smack into something. Some people can do that kind of thing and they have the right personality for it. But most of the people I work through and I'll uh, work with and also myself personally, I prefer to be a little more cautious about things. And so if I was in a dark room, what would I do? I'd slowly put my arms out and kind of feel out the edges. Oh, okay, it feels like there's a chair or like a sofa or something like that over here. Okay, might not want to move in that direction. Oh, what's, what's that? That feels like a wall. Um, okay, okay, what's this over here? Oh, there's nothing over here. That must be a clear space. Okay, I can probably step over there. And as we do this, as we start to push our comfort zone a little bit, our comfort zone starts to get a little bit bigger. We start to get a sense of the geography of the room. And the same is true when it comes to our comfort zone in a relationship. As we start to push that comfort zone by testing areas where it's like, okay, this feels comfortable, this doesn't feel comfortable, then we start to get a sense about what's truly happening. So, you know, maybe that means flirting a little bit more to see, okay, is there any resistance to flirting? If there is, okay, that tells me something. If there's not, okay, that tells me something else as well too. And by the way, my comfort zone just got a little bit bigger and I now can flirt with my ex. And so what we want to do is we want to start feeling out the geography of this emotional dark room to figure out where your ex is at. Are they just being nice? Or do they really like you? Until you actually start to push the edges of the dark room, you're probably not going to know. Whatever you do, don't just stand still in the dark room, but actually start to move through it, okay? Um, by the way, this is all what we teach inside our course called Effortless Connection. You can find more about that over at modernlove.life slash EC modernlove.life slash E as in effortless and C as in connection. I know I'm really clever with these URLs, aren't I? But anyway, um, yeah, that's what we wanna do. We want to slowly push the boundaries of our comfort zone and the comfort zone of the dynamic between the two of us by doing things like getting out of the polite trap, by doing things like sharing how we're feeling, by doing things like flirting a little bit, by doing things like pushing that boundary a little bit to feel what's there. Is it a piece of furniture? Is it a wall? Is it a door? Is it just empty space that's safe to walk into? And as we do this, we're going to find out what's really going on. Anyway, if you did like this video, please make sure you hit that thumbs up button for the algorithm. Subscribe if you're not already. Leave a comment, all those great things. And um, I will talk to you next time. Please take care.